It's Emma. Hey, we're here. Uh, let's get warmed up. Let's do some. Let's do some warm ups and stuff. Woo. I think I'm gonna have to buy a new new book. Share screen. There we go. Now I can see you. Good morning. Good morning. Long time no see. Yeah, it's been a hell of a ride. Dead out. Well, while I'm trying to get my my tech in order, hey, good morning, everybody, and uh, we got some people watching us on the internet. Good morning, everybody. Hello. Good morning, everybody on the internet. Um, if this is working for you, please let us know in the comments because uh, you know we do get to see those. I'll open up the chat. Can you all? Can you both see the chat on the side? At like, uh, no, mm -hmm. no. There's a. I see a. Yeah, that's all I see here with us. Hmm. Very nice. Well. Uh, Good morning, everybody. Welcome to a drawing with tattooers. I'm your host, James Wisdom. Uh, today we've got Creature. Welcome, Creature. Yeah, and then also we've got Amber Morgan. Hey, what's up, Amber? Good morning. What's Good morning. up? I'm awake. I swear. Yeah, me too. I swear. Um, well, we uh, we usually like to do a little bit of. Um, warm-ups so i'm going to share my screen here uh right now almost almost there <laughs> and uh and then we can um get started with this thing yeah share my screen please this one share it got it did you say it was monday it is monday i love and, monday and, yeah, you can't you tell? Yeah, absolutely. Can you tell? <laughs> hey, uh, so, uh, Jorge, um, good morning to you. Thanks for joining us today. Really, it's uh, very nice to, to have you. Uh, here we go. How about this? Share. Ta-da! Yes. All right. Well, there's the screen. Let's see if we can... Yeah! <laughs> All right, I can draw okay good so uh all right i'm gonna you know just do a couple of quick warm-ups uh you know again I, I really like to you know to think about like the um you know like what it is we're doing all right i'm gonna make this one like a like a perfect one with procreate it's nice you can just sort of hold the shape and then it snaps to like a perfect shape right some circles and stuff um but what's nice you know you think about it is that you know we've got this minor axis right and then a, a major one all the way, you know, the widest point right to the narrowest point, right? So major or minor. Anyway, you have to have this for the ellipse to work. But you know what's what's kind of fun is that you can always, you know, you can always turn this thing, you know, wherever you want, and it will work. So, just something to keep in mind as you're drawing them, as you're thinking about, uh, you know, like what it is that uh, what it is that we're doing. So. Um, all right, so I'm just going to do a few of them and get warmed up. I'm just <laughs> right here. Uh, I'm just trying to like get my hands warmed up, get my get my my the blood pumping, as it were. All right, maybe you go around the track a couple times. Right, maybe it's not perfect, but uh, you know, I guess I think that uh, there's something really important about warming up the muscles. This is physical. <laughs> Right, so if you're gonna draw, you're gonna do a tattoo, whatever you're doing, it's uh, it is so, uh, get the get the blood pumping. Uh, yeah, and if Gabe, Gabe, if you're there, tell us how to turn the chat on so everybody can uh, so everybody can see it. All right. Just a few more of these, just getting warmed up. Trying to find a little bit of awakeness. Oh, geez. 
Um, and I have been like talking about it a little bit, but like doing a little bit of doing a little bit of warm up before you get started. <laughs> that last one was pretty pretty good. Um, doing a little bit of warm up before you get started on you know drawing tasks or tattooing or whatever you're doing. Um, I think it's uh, I think it would be very very beneficial. And you know it's something nice about kind of working out some of the the kinks as it were. I definitely notice the difference when I have time to warm up before I tattoo and when I don't. Excellent. Um, and there's something nice about just being, you know, there's, there's, there could be a, a creativity that could actually sort of happen. So, um, all right, that's pretty good. Some good warm ups and stuff. Uh, let's see here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna switch to this off. Cool. All right. So uh, just a quick stretch, buddy. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of hold out my arm here, and then I'm gonna pull, pull back on the hand, right? I'm trying to stretch uh, the muscles in my forearm, right? Not too much, right? But just a, but just a little bit, right? Just a little bit of, a little bit of stretch, okay? And then other way, right? Pull back. Just hold it for a few moments. Okay, very good. Now, other side, because you're going to use both of your arms when you do with tattoos. Okay. Count it off. 20, 30 seconds or so. 28, 29, 30. Very good. And then, again, so push. Push them together like this, right? Just push, hold it. Again, you're just you're just trying to stretch out. This one is shoulders, right? You can feel it on the shoulders. It may look silly, maybe, but you know, I do this a lot. It's important. You know what I mean? It really shake shake it off. It's important, right? To to take care of yourself, right? Your tools as it were so um anyway it's so great to have everybody today um again uh this is drawing for tattooers on guy atchison's reinventing the tattoo network um we've got a uh, drawing drawing skill builders drawing group with jason leeser at noon today so you know after this be sure to come back and Check out Jason's show. We always uh, we always love seeing Jason. Um, so good morning and um, yeah, I've I've got like a you know got a short chapter in a book that I want to share today. I like to do that, and uh, you know there'll be a little drawing exercise that we will do together. But I wanted to just uh, you know give everybody a chance to. Uh, you know, to greet you and say good morning, and then also, uh, you know, if there's any sort of these are topics up for discussion. Now's a now's a great time. So, uh, creature, what's what's going on with you? What's new with you? I am currently trying to get the business creatures cave off off the ground. We're making headway. There was a few pitfalls we didn't see in the road that we're working through. Um, I have appointments set up tomorrow. I have six different units to view. Um, some downtown, some uptown, some around town, but nonetheless, you know, one more swing. Awesome. Well, good luck. Keep on playing. Thank you. Almost there. Right. I, that was what we were kind of talking off about off camera. And that was uh, this idea of like, uh, you know, you when you get what you want, right, it can be very, you know, it, it doesn't necessarily make everything better. 
it might actually just be a whole nother round of uh, uh, challenges and difficulties, um, you know, in the arduous journey, as it were. But, um, you know, it doesn't mean that, doesn't mean we should uh, quit, you know. Um, and not to, not to make it all like, uh, you know, uh, to gloss over that difficulty, right? That it's, you know, that it's all, you know, uh, it's all positive and stuff. It's uh, positive things happen. Happiness is uh, is something that like can occur. So you know, not to write it off, but for the most part, you know, like uh, this being uncomfortable, I think is uh, probably a uh, you know probably a good sign or something that we got to be uh, you know sort of able to sit in. So um, ah, Amber, we lost you. I'm still here. I just had to turn off my, my my camera for a second. I'll be right back. No problem. So, um, but I, uh, I'm really glad that you are also, um, you know, you're so dedicated creature and you are really trying to, you know, get your business ground. This is, uh, uh, this is something that, you know, I admire. So I'm, you know, I'm really glad that, uh, I appreciate sticking, that. of course, yeah, you're sticking with it. It does seem, you know, it seems like, uh, um, you know, it's been a couple of tough breaks, but here you are, you're coming back. Like you, like you were saying, like you're, you know, you're going to give it another try. And, uh, that's something that I think is, uh, um, that's good do you know who David Gogans is? Uh, yeah, the, um, he's like the motivation dude. Yeah. 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 He he refers to the Rocky movie and and how, you know, Rocky got the snot beat out of him, but that last round, he's like, come on. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> I'm not done. I can't be done. I remember how I felt before I began, and I'm never going to feel that way ever again. So I'm just going that way because that way sucked. So that way's better. So I go that way. <laughs> right. Well, I heard, you know, read somewhere one time, you know, if you're, uh, <laughs> if you wake up one day, you find yourself in hell, right? It's like hell's in front of you, hell's behind you, left and right. What do you do? You just, you go into it, right? You, <laughs> you got to go deeper into it. That's like the only way. Because you can't give up, uh, you know, like. Cause then I took a cold shower cool. today. And I've done a hundred push-ups already. No. Already. I do that every day. And I do that before most people get up out of bed. Awesome. No, that's that's awesome. Yeah, it's been cold immersion. It's it's January, so it's definitely cold immersion time. Uh, <laughs> you just go outside and it is. I've been uh, taking a cold shower every day for three years. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. great. <laughs> I yeah. take cold showers too, but that's just because I'm 47, and it's the only way I can regulate my body temperature at this point. <laughs> I'm, I'm, older, I'm older than you, Amber. I don't know how you do it. Oh, I don't enjoy it. It's a bucket full of suck every day, but that's okay. Uh, Mark Twain says, if you eat a live frog first thing in the morning every day, your life won't get worse. It'll get better. Mm -hmm. You can't you can't do anything worse than that. Yeah, I've heard so, that. Eat, eat the the little I like frogs, but I like them, you know. Cooked or cooked chirping. On the plate and, you know, not looking like a frog. I don't. I, tried frogs. Frogs. I, I'm I'm not a fan. They taste like frogs, and I I don't know frogs. No, smell like, like, like frogs. They taste, and I'm like, uh. and they taste different depending on the region they live in. Uh, they <laughs> tell me. I, I've always wanted to know this. Why do ducks quack? Why Why don't they echo? I, I've always this is a secret or a mystery to life. I don't know. I, I maybe it's something in the frequency of their quack that doesn't echo. Because you know, now that you point it out, I've been around a lot of ducks in my life, and I've never heard a duck echo. I've heard a chicken echo. 
I don't know. I don't know what you both are talking about. So, <laughs> so I am like, I'm out of the. I am out of this. Um, out of this discussion because I cannot. Uh, I <laughs> uh, get it. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Right. So anyway, we're gonna get back on track, right? Because we are doing drawing today, everybody. Drawing so I want to share with you this. <laughs> I hey, have a drawing question. I want to share with, uh, with all of you. Um, uh, a chapter in a book, which I like oh. to do, right? So, uh, so morning, Jason. Yeah, say what's up to the chat, everybody. Hey, chat, say what's up. What's up, everybody? Uh, Good morning. Good morning. I like that smaller, right. better. Right. So, um, okay. So, this book, uh, can you all see it? Yes. Drawing for the Absolute yeah. and Utter Beginner by Claire Watson Garcia. Uh, I was unaware of this book, um, but uh, you know, recently, uh, recently I discovered it, and uh, and as a part of sort of like this kind of uh, you know, we're beginning the new year, so that was a uh, you know, my thought is that what we would do is uh, you know, like. Get back to basics. <laughs> That's what we do all the time. But but get back to the basics, right? So um, anyway, this is a beginning drawing book. But I really, uh, but I think that there's something really good about uh, you know some of the things you get from this beginner thing. So um, going back to basics is always good. I hope so. I really do. Um, and uh, and 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 what's interesting, I think, about this particular. Uh, in this particular uh, chapter that we're going to read, is uh, is really how how basic it is, um, and so again, I think you know that's a that's a part of the the aim that we're that we're really aiming for here is that like we have a we have an audience where you know we're going to have absolute beginners, right? But we also sometimes get people who are very advanced in their drawing, and so it's really nice. Um, it's really nice uh, when we get a chance to, um, you know, to again, get back to those basics and stuff. All right. So, uh, okay. Let's, um, let me see if I can read this to you. Okay. So chapter two, turning edges into objects. And there's a nice quote here from Georgia O'Keeffe. Um, In a way, nobody sees a flower, really. It is so small, we haven't time. Like to have a friend takes time, right? <laughs> uh, we'll let you sit in that for a little bit, right? You know, let that kind of marinate. But it's, uh, you know, again, I think it's, uh, it's really kind of profound. Okay. So um, earlier, you know, there's a chapter before this. So, you know, again, I, I want to recommend this book for, you know, not only beginners, but also, you know, people who are a little bit more advanced. Um, I, think you're, I think there's always, you know, good stuff to get um, in the literature. But, uh I'll just be here. Uh, now, yes, yes, I will. Yes, I will. Um, as we're uh, as we're as we're going through this, I do want to. Uh, I'm gonna I want to plug the Red Tree event. So G Gabe has uh, reminded me to do that. So we will, you know, we'll feature that here uh, as soon as we're done. So so don't let me forget. Okay, back to it. Now that we can replicate shapes and edges with some success, let's apply that skill to drawing three-dimensional objects. Read through the material in the section completely, including the problem solvers page, before starting to draw. Uh, to find subject matter, collect objects from around the home. Detailed, segmented, articulated tools and equipment from the kitchen, garage, and hobbies are great choices. Uh, leaves, sliced fruit, flowers, onions, and slotted spoons all work well. Radishes with leaves and scallions with roots are highly recommended. Use the illustrations in this section as a guide. So what I'm asking for, what the author is actually asking for, is to grab an object, some kind of personal object, uh, and we're going to draw a picture of it. So um, so anyway, while we're reading this, if you want to grab something so you can draw along in just a, a little bit, uh, please feel invited to do so. Okay. So again, to, to uh, you know reiterate. Choose objects that mean something to you. 
For instance, if you love to work with plants and flowers, garden tools may cause you to connect with your subject matter more energetically. However, if you need to feel an interest in the shapes you see, not just in the activity associated with the tools you choose. Stay away from plain, smooth objects or anything that's so complicated that you may uh, be asking for a bad time. Lamps, crystal, duck toys, uh, sorry, decoy, decoy ducks, and rounded sculptures seem to be frequent bad choices for beginners. Choosing the best subjects can take some time. Treat it as a treasure hunt. Okay. Separate your treasures into three categories. Objects that are relatively flat, such as brushes or spatulas. And those with overlapping parts, such as scissors or eyeglasses. Those with more spatial depth, cookie cutters. The last group is the most challenging to draw, which is interesting to say, but you know, it's, there's, there's reasons for that. Uh, put one chosen object on white paper so you can see its edges more clearly. Arrange it in a way that appeals to you. Um, we've taken to calling this uh, your beloved in my class because the attraction should be strong. So, all right, right away, I just, I like, there's something about this little teapot <laughs> that I think is, um, I think it's amazing. I think it's beautiful. All right, you might be thinking that it's, uh, has, there's definitely some drawing issues that we can uh, certainly identify. But um, there's something about the confidence of the line and the authenticity of it that I think is really, it is really nice. Um, and again, you know, we may have an aim that we want to get to this very refined and like almost photographic type of representationalism. Um, however, there's something about the charm of drawing um, and having that your own language is of course like totally connected to your own body, right? Your body makes this, you know, these marks and so on and so forth. And so these marks that you make um, they are specific to you. It's a signature, if you like. And um, anyway, uh, so again, there's something about this language of drawing and there's something about this, um, you know, a connection that you have to it that I think is really, um, you know, you can't, you can't really uh, get it any other way. So um, anyway, let's, uh, let's continue with the reading. Um, but yeah, no, it's a fine, it's a funny, funky drawing over here, right? Uh, but, but, uh, you know, I hope, I hope you can see the charm in it as well. Okay, so to get the best results when applying your contour drawing technique to three-dimensional objects, look carefully before drawing and sustain long lines whenever possible. Digest the edge in front of you. Don't just glance and go. Give your eyes time to move along the edge of the object you're going to draw until you truly come. Project the shape of that line from start to finish on your paper so you get a brief feel for starting point and destination. When you draw, you can follow the pattern of line you project. Slow, deliberate approach. Approach your chosen object as you did in chapter one, maintaining your contour drawing technique. Don't worry about the predictable wiggles and lack of full three-dimensional look. And before you begin any exercises in this chapter, Avoid reading while drawing, right? Focus on the drawings, is what we're saying. Um, and you can refer to the following summary of essentials, right? Draw slowly, use continuous lines, dark, sustain your lines as long as you can, break lines when necessary, uh, record the contours of the objects you observe. Look the long, horizontal, or diagonal lines at the top of your object as a starting place. Pick a line you think uh, you can do and or want to try. Stay with slow pressure. Don't lift your hand until it's logical to do so. Think of every edge as a wire. Nothing tentative, any edge that can be turned into a line, including sharp edge. A solid, unequivocal black that can be used for uh, the darker areas, right? So there's a, there's a, there's a section here of just sort of, you know, uh, We'll look at these drawings here. Looks like teapot, right? Maybe it's some kind of squash or something. I don't know what it is. Flower or something. Maybe it's a yeah, maybe pumpkin or whatever. Strainer, wrench. The students are talking about like why they chose these things. You're gonna have your own reasons. 
inside of an apple. The one was a dragon fruit, I think. Which one? This one? The the first one. This is dragon yeah, fruit? One. Yes, please. <laughs> They're yummy. They uh, are. I will, uh, I, I think that will accept it. Acceptable answer. Okay. Objects you find an affinity for, right? These are going to be, uh, you know, something that you, again, the, the point, and, we'll, and I'm sure it'll be sort of gone over again, the point is not to draw what you think something looks like, but rather to observe it carefully. And then, you know, again, this sort of, we're just sort of translating in it with, with our mark making, right? We're just making lines and stuff. Um, this is sort of like before sketching, if you like. You know, <laughs> the, the whole point of this is just to, you know, to kind of to go for it. Um, and I know that may sound funny. We do sketch a lot. I think sketching is super important. So it's not to say that you know, we're throwing that out the window. But in this exercise, it's very similar to last week's exercise. We looked at our hands and we did this contour, almost like blind contour, it's, you know, or no look, right? We weren't looking at our paper. Uh, Kyle Olson was on with us last week and he did it. Uh, Harriet. Uh, did one too. It was, uh, you know, it's very cool. Okay, so uh, problem solvers. This is, uh, this is like a, just about the last section of this chapter, and then we get to the drawing. Okay, to translate a three-dimensional object into a two-dimensional drawing, develop a strategy that gives you a mental visual run-through of how you'll approach the challenge. With a gesture of your hand over the surface of your paper, you can replicate the general space of your drawing that your drawing will occupy to get a preliminary feel for its general shape and dimensions. Notice how aspects of the shape connect. Look over the object, taking in its shape, deciding where you'll start and generally where you'll go. To enter the drawing, uh, pick a long line you can follow. Take small pauses throughout as you decide your next moves. Getting lost. Line quality is highly significant in contour drawing. If you goof and get lost, don't give up don't point uh, out your goof by crossing it out. Uh, the bold the confidence of line is broken more by cross outs than by inaccurate line. Now, I don't necessarily like, I don't think that I can really cross things out in my drawings, but maybe you were erasing it at this point. Um, yeah, we're, this is an exercise, right? That's what, that, I think that's the spirit of this, you know, what we're talking about. So, um, right. So uh, once you're finished, you'll be surprised how little mistakes will matter. What is seen at the viewing distance is different from what you see at your doing a distance, right? There's a difference between, you know, where you're at when you're making the thing versus what it looks like when you're, you know, looking at it, observing it. Instead of calling attention to an inconsequential slip by crossing it out, your strategy is to calmly pick up at the right place and keep going. If you are nervous about continuing, remind yourself it's only a drawing and you can always do another. Uh, tedious relationships. Don't feel compelled to draw the same object until you get it right. This should be an ideal relationship, so just let go. If it wasn't your true beloved, right, substitute an object that you feel better and start over with a new energy. You'll find some objects will stimulate uh, you to work in a more focused way. Bends. Your drawings of uh, machine-made objects won't look like they came straight out of a catalog. They'll only slightly, uh, they'll look slightly animated, perhaps distorted. At this point, just concentrate on seeing, recording, and maintaining the contour line. You can always add more accuracy later. Uh, difficult parts. If you see something you know will give you trouble, practice that portion on a scrap piece of paper until you've learned the shapes of it. Spiral shapes like corkscrews are prime candidates. Perspective. Beginners often use the word perspective to indicate their concern with giving dimension to objects. But perspective is not an issue at this point since you won't get much spatial depth from contour drawing anyway, although you might get more than you expect. Negative space. Uh, when you draw a slotted spoon, for example, the little spaces created by the cutout slots are called the negative spaces, right? And here's a, here's like some scissors. You can kind of see the spaces where your fingers would go, right? And, the, you know, so we're interested in that, calling that negative space. Um, 
yeah, so check out these illustrations and uh, see uh, how often it's the shape of what is not there. The negative space is surrounded by what is there that adds or attracts even more interest, right? These voids inside of this, uh, these handles are, we almost sort of, we know what to do with them. Overlaps. Objects with overlapping parts seem to give beginners amazing powers of x-ray vision. Superman may indeed see traffic right through a halfway a highway overpass as he flies, but uh, we need to only uh, we need only to draw what we're able to see, um, not what we know is there. So we know one blade of the scissors exits under the other, but we only see part of the blade, right? So Gestalt principle, right? Continuation, right? you can see it's it's very basic and intuitive, but this is the the conceptual sort of language that we go. You can see, you know, one side emerging from under, you know, from under the other, and thus it's, you know, it's like our mind tells us what's going on, right? Our imagination sort of fills in the, there's a gap there, but we, we understand it, um, potentially, right? Same thing with these keys. We know, uh, we look at it, and the cues, the visual cues tell us that this one is in front of this one. It gives us a sense of depth, even though, you know, it's like these are, these are very flat. Keys are very, you know, they're very, you know, they don't have a lot of uh, depth to them. Just a little bit of thickness, right? But here we can see quite a bit of depth just because there's this relationship of overlapping. Um, and so, again, we're just, these may be sort of basic, but it's, it, but they are, I think, um, you know, they're really interesting to think about. So, um, so-called mistakes. If you don't get it just right, you can learn from that glitch, storing up uh, the, the site feel manually of what you will, will avoid next time. Every line teaches you something about how to draw. Keep in mind that drawings rarely conform to the artist's vision. Artwork has a secret life of its own. Uh, you're in for constant surprises when drawing. You may not be able to recognize what it is in your drawing at first simply because it isn't ever quite what you anticipated. Um, all right, reviewing your 3D drawings. When you completed two or three objects, put your page of drawings up on the wall and study them. All right, so give yourself a bit of critique, right? Uh, did you maintain the contour drawing technique, going over slowly, using pressure? Uh, draw a recognizable object. Draw what you saw and not what you knew was there or thought was there. If you had some success with the above objects, uh, even if limited, give yourself credit. You're headed in the right direction. Check in with your fellow beginners and see how did they uh, how they did. Pick out work you like and see if you can identify why you like it. Are there objects you enjoy looking at, not only because they are accurate or recognizable, but simply because you enjoy the shapes and the movements? Right. So we've got all of these. You know, there's similar objects, right? But there's also kind of a, you know, this linear, you know, they're not, they don't have this, you know, squareness to them or whatever. They're, you know, they're longer or whatever. Um, so when drawing has a repetitive angular shapes, uh, as in the plant, the eye follows these reference points, stimulated by the rhythm of the drawing, which seems faster and more animated. Rounder shapes literally have fewer reference points therefore give a more flowing, peaceful impression. Don't be concerned if an exercise drawing runs off this page, such as the leaves at the top of the plant. Um, as mentioned earlier, it simply means that the artist's concentration is focused on line, just as it should be. Uh, let's take a look at that. Yep, looks like all the leaves and stuff fell off the page. This is something we would talk about in, you know, in life drawing quite a bit. Like if you're trying to draw a figure and the foot is going to fall off the page, right? You didn't, you know, there's not enough room. Don't try to squeeze it in there, <laughs> you know. Instead, you know, let it, let it sort of be cropped out. Um, this is going to be, this is often considered to be a better sort of approach and probably more, uh, you know, practicing your observation rather than just sort of like pure imaginative sort of what you think is there. That is important too, but you know, there's going to be different times, you know, that you'll d use different approaches, whether it's, you know, purely imaginative 
versus uh, you know you're trying to observe, you're trying to hone that that skill of uh, of really looking. Okay, this part's uh, this part I think is actually uh, it's kind of nice and maybe pertinent to what we've been talking about today. Okay, locating looks good. In the drawing course I teach during the first class, which covers the material you're working on, I now ask students to find and share something they like about a fellow beginner's work. My students always respond with enthusiasm, but when I ask them to share aloud what's good about their own artwork, they find it far more difficult to do so. Initially, most students only point to what they don't like about them. They argue that they can't see anything good. A different argument from saying there isn't anything good to see. Uh, and inevitably, one beginner will admire the very qualities in the drawing of another student who feels unsure or negative about that same artwork. Locating what's good is a practical skill. It means knowing what to look for and how to identify it in, uh, in words. Saying it aloud isn't necessary when looking at uh, one's own artwork. However, it's not a bad idea. Putting your perceptions into words can give you more clarity when evaluating work. Students frequently review their first drawings for evidence as to whether they deserve to be an artist or not. Harsh self-assessment presents the greatest obstacle by far to the development of artistic potential. Sometimes I feel that beginners are hard on themselves as protection. If they preempt others by saying something harsh about their own work, they haven't left themselves open to hearing the imagined critical remark from someone else. To help banish such unproductive, self-limiting criticism, we're going to expand the method of constructive evaluation we have used thus far. The following may look a bit like kindergarten bulletin board, but remember, we were all artists back then. Okay, so treat your artistic side politely as you would a friend. Don't crush this new relationship with rudeness and cruelty. Would you want to keep company with someone who insults you? Uh, limit any criticism to three specific points that need your attention. Find some small thing that you did right. This is a practical measure, not sentiment. Uh, and it gives you a model to follow. Develop techniques once you know how to identify what works and what doesn't and how to fix problems. Uh, you will fear mistakes less and less uh, and move ahead more rapidly. Make improvements, uh, make improvement your focus and not criticism. Um, so, yeah, claim your success. Be positive about one's accomplishments, no matter how small, um, is more challenging than identifying what's wrong. Many beginners can easily find what's not working, but rarely what's good. Perhaps they think it seems immodest to claim a success. That is, one's counter to what society teaches us is acceptable. But skillful students are able to identify the right path, uh, the, the sturdy footholds in their work, so they know how to proceed. Take your lead from them. Finding what works, no matter how small, needs to be a part of your method because it provides incentives to fix what isn't working. Uh, it also gives you an example to follow that you can mimic uh, in sp the specific qualities of line that aren't successful in your work. And you need it to maintain your drawing progress because ultimately you're the one who's in charge of your own work. Identifying what works develops your powers of observation as well as nourishing your self-confidence. This constructive approach will help you to see the larger picture in the drawing process. It will put into perspective those imperfect results that are bound to occur as you learn skills uh, you've never had before. Uh, think of walking and learning your native language, all much more complex than this process will be. Your approach to drawing will not be all accepting and unconditional. It will be a balance between recognizing what works and what doesn't and using your growing skill repertoire uh, from which to choose the tools you need to fix those things that need fixing. By exercising your capacity for constructive evaluation, you will learn how to be both a player and coach effectively. Uh, this doesn't mean negative comments have no place in the process. Get it out there, right? With every classroom of beginners, I hear a chorus of frustrated grumbles and complaints, uh, so you are not alone or odd if you do the same. By all means, moan and groan if any particular level of frustration gets to you. However, practicing and 
the constructive approach will help you get back on the horse, as it were, um, and keep moving ahead. Complaining and learning to be a constructive critic uh, are both integral parts of learning how to draw. Uh, your drawing experience now, you may have had the experience of locking into a particular object, committing intense energy and interest to exploring the shape and line you saw. You may have felt unaware of time passing by. This type of experience, almost like being mesmerized by what you see, usually yields strong, interesting work. Uh, the objects you've drawn may be distorted slightly out of proportion as compared with the originals, but it's just that quality that gives them character. That may actually turn uh, the inanimate object into animated characters. Uh, if there is more than one image on a page of your drawing pad, those characters may seem to be emotionally charged in an emotionally charged relationship, right? Just through proximity, right? These objects are close at hand and thus they you know, you have to associate them with one another. Uh, so, um, artists create relationships between inanimate objects, fruits, flowers, teacups, wine glasses. There are no real connection exists. Artists project their own human vitality into landscapes and still lives, as well as pure abstract shapes. You may see evidence of this creative vitality in the animation of your own objects. The distortion isn't a mistake, it's a gift. In a classroom for the beginners or artists at any level, each person will draw the same objects differently, though recognizably. By now, you may see some evidence of your uh, own innate aesthetic, that unique and automatic preference for a certain scale, shape, rhythm, something very simple to your individuality. It's already there. You just need to learn how to let it show in a more fully realized manner. Uh, and so, um, Yeah, I think that's a great place to great place to stop. So, all right, let's get back to uh, let's get back to it, gang. Um, uh, yeah, uh, I hope that you enjoyed that chapter uh, in drawing for the absolute beginner. Um, yeah, like and all those really sort of uh, beautiful like line drawings and stuff that we saw. I think. Um, uh, it, it's really tempting, right, to sort of to look at like, you know, and you need to, right? You need to look at inspiring work, things that you would really admire and that you, you want to, you know, you want, you want to aspire to, you know, to get into. Um, but I do think that there is something that's really valuable about picking an object and like staying with it and, you know, drawing it, right? Uh, so again, there are constructive techniques that you can use to sort of like you know, bring about a real sense of uh, you know accuracy. That's not what we're exactly talking about this time. Again, we're we're really kind of taking a very sort of inner mindset, and this is um, you know uh, can be a challenge in itself, right? To uh, you know, take that step back, as it were. But uh, this is uh, what I was. Wanted to cover today, and I figured, uh, you know, we might as well, might as well do one. Let me see. I'm gonna, I'm gonna share my screen. Um, so, Amber and Creature got you here today. Are you, um, are you going to, are you gonna draw with us today, or? Uh, <laughs> Absolutely, I'm cool. Where are you going to grab a um, grab an object to draw? I am. Very good. I am. So, um, getting things together, right? So I have a. Uh, I've got mine set up. It's you know I'm just going to like. Uh, I'm going to share my screen. Uh, hopefully it's ugh, having all kinds of technical issues today for some reason. Let's see if it's see if it's working yet. Yeah, 
Cool. Okay. Yeah. So there's uh hmm. <laughs> I can almost see it. Ugh. Working the working the bugs out, everybody. Share, you gonna work? That's all right. Hmm. Maybe. Huh. Give me a break. Let's try. Uh, I will try again. We'll try it one more time. But while I'm while I'm I am trying. doing this, while I'm messing around, right? Uh, I would love it if you know. You're out there if you want to draw with us. Grab a grab an object. We saw lots of examples, but it can be you know anything that you uh, relate to in some way. Um, this could be uh, could be like a you know set of keys or like a tool that you like to use. Um, or a flower be, pot. Could be a flower pot as well. What the closet? Share it. Let's see if it works. Don't mean to have all this dead air, gang, but um, let's see if it works. Come on. Hey, now you can see my uh, see my uh, object, right? This, this Is that from the OJ case? What's that? Is that from the OJ case? Too soon? No. I don't. Yeah, I don't think it's too soon. But it, this one, this one is, uh, this one is my. I've, I've had control of this glove the whole time, and that was a pair. That was a pair from that from that famous those famous gloves. So, um, fair, fair so instead of those, oh, uh, you know, I just I had my own glove. So, because it's winter time. It's winter time winter right time. now, and I've been wearing gloves, and uh, it's been, um, it, it was so bitter cold, you know, I was like shoveling the snow, and I had to take my gloves off for a minute, and I'm like trying to use my keys, and it's like, it's almost, you know, I was thinking about doing a, you know, a set of keys, but yeah, just, they've been on my mind, and it's like, you know, when you, it, it was, uh, became so aware of my, you know, myself, because it was, it was so bitter cold, right, it was like, you know, Felt the, How felt cold the did it get where you guys are? Uh, it was below. It was below zero. So okay. I know that other people get worse than that. Or no, we get to thirty, then I was like, "Are we done?" Yeah, we got below zero for sure. So, so yeah, you gotta you gotta be you gotta take care. All right. So, um, what's that? Point the cameras. Mm -hmm. Ah. Well, if you all feel free to point your cameras at your artwork if you can. If you can't, no big deal. But we're trying to work that out. It's, it'd be so nice if we could all share our drawing oh, yeah. and working. But um, all right. So I'm again. The whole point here is like we're not sketching. We're just trying to find this contour shape. So <laughs> it may or may not be the most beautiful thing. But we'll you know let's go with it. Okay. So Wait, I'm looking. This is all the opportunity. This long horizontal sort of line to begin with. I'm going to start here at the top. I'm going to start with this uh, thumb part. And go back to the back. Already seemed out of proportion, but I think there's, there's kind of a... Kind of a, you know, just visually you'll start to see the relationship. I don't know how long. I don't want to. <laughs> the author says, you know, "Oh, don't cross out that." <laughs> oh no, my uh, my drawing isn't. My drawings are showing up. I'm so so frustrated with the uh, um, with my tech today. Everybody, I I have to uh, I have to say Monday morning tech gremlins. Gremlins, definitely yeah, gremlins. Really, I'm so frustrated with this, uh, um, with uh, this inability to uh, to uh, 
share my drawing today. I'm going to, all right, I'm going to finish up my drawing in one minute here. And then uh, I'm going to, I'll share it. And if it'll be a, it'll be a short drawing day today, but this is the exercise that we're trying to, um, that we're, that we're trying out. Because again, uh, if you remember, um, if you remember, yes, uh, last week rather, that we were able to, you know, we did, we drew our hands, and it was, uh, again, <laughs> I was having tech issues last week too. Go figure. But um, yeah, I think that looks pretty good. And so again, just try to try to avoid sketching this one. All right, that's uh, that's. Definitely uh, what we're going to cover next week, sketching and stuff. But this week, we're thinking about contour line. Line quality is uh, certainly something that you can keep in mind as well. So, all right. I think that I have I am done with my drawing. Let me see if I can show it, and then um, let's see if we can show this. Show this thing. No, I don't think so. <clears throat> I will instead, uh, I will just send myself this picture so I can show it, and then uh, that way you all can. There's always a workaround. There's a workaround, right? We will, you know, I'm going to share this. I want to share it with you just to show you where I got. Um, airdrop it to me, please. Here it comes. I heard it. There it should be. Okay. Should be able to show you. Maybe? Ah, there it is. Okay. And I will share this image with you. Perhaps. <laughs> um, hold on. Hey, James. Yes. I do your flower. Yeah, thank you, creature. Uh, let me see if I can. Can I spotlight you? Gabe, if you're in the background, can you spotlight creature? It's okay. They can see it. It looks great. Yeah, hopefully, you all, hopefully you all can see it. I like the pot, too. Oh, yeah, thank I you. Do, I do also. Oh, spotlighting me instead. There we go. There we can go. you turn like your camera? Turn can you turn your camera for a moment, creature? It's like we're in landscape. It's in portrait, portrait. mode. We need in landscape. All right. I, I don't know why it Perfect. changed. But. Yeah. Well, it didn't change back, but yes, thank you for showing it. Nice. Oh, yeah, that's better. Yeah, better angle. Nice. That's my yeah, style. Drawing there. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for letting me show that. Amber, let's let's see if we can check Here yours out. Amber. Come on, it's really oh, crude. Right. I just kind of did Digitized. the one line. Thing. Wait, there it is. Okay. Can you there see it? Is. Yeah, they just yeah, just like kind of came into resolution just now. Yeah, cool. Oh, yeah. Nice. It's the only thing I could find around me that i had any emotional connection to was my coffee very very nice all right so I, all right so i'll show i'll just i'll turn my screen around hopefully y'all can see it there's my uh there's mine yeah, that's great oh, there you go there it is yeah so my reference and my glove yeah i think um all right, so we're supposed to identify some uh, some stuff that went right. Okay, so I think that overall, um, I'm nice, I'm glad about the proportions. Uh, mm -hmm. I think the proportions. Absolutely. 
that's that's a positive thing. <laughs> he even so, got some of the texture in there just with some of the lines of the leather. Thank you. I do. I appreciate that. So, um, yeah. Uh, hmm. Yes. I, I tend to have an issue with my line weight and, and I, my foreground and my background kind of get muddled from that. And so I appreciate this exercise today. So pick out a positive thing. You, that was the, that was the whole, uh, you know, there was a whole section on like, uh, you know, <laughs> like you got to accept this. Uh, I did something well part, you know, like, um, uh, so what is, what is it in there that you think, you know, in your drawing that you think went well? I put a smiley face on my flower. <laughs> okay. It's, uh, yeah, we are, we are taking small steps today, everybody. It is, That's right. It is tough to be like, you know what I mean? Like sometimes I think there's something about it. It's a real turnoff. You know, people are arrogant. They're like, uh, you know my drawings are so good i mean just as an example they might sort of say that they're so good at something um or be conceited in some way and uh so that's not what we're talking about instead we are talking about trying really you know to to actually be authentic and say all right this is okay you know yeah. what i mean to withhold being ultra critical and to be be know, humble not self-deprecating <sighs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's tough. I think. I think it is tough because it's defensive, right? Ultimately, it's defensive to be so hypercritical that it's, um, you know, you, you're 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 foreclosing the capacity for somebody to actually critique you, right? If you are just like ultra tough, you know what I mean? Harsher, harsher than you ought to. Mm. You are in you are in that way. You're being you know uh, you are you are sort of cutting off the ability to hear anything that's going to be you know potentially critical, and that could that could benefit you ultimately. That's the, that's the point of it. Um, that's the, that should be the spirit of uh, you know of giving critique, right? And so um, again, I would say that uh, this show today great big success because we were able to you know go live <laughs> we had we had a couple of great friends join us today right and then also you know we've got people watching us live people watch this after the fact i am uh yeah the quality of our artwork is not a direct reflection of who we are as people thank you kyle i <laughs> appreciate that i do appreciate yes. that and that's also very wise um oh christopher nice tattoo what i needed thank you thank you christopher that's very, it's, that's really, really cool uh, that you enjoyed it. And I do hope that it's, you know, again, this is this, uh, we're relating to each other on this level, right? Like, you know, hopefully you do feel, yeah, new reading material. Thank you, Kyle. Hopefully you do feel like there's, um, that you're always beginning, right? You're always sort of like, you know, you're working through this stuff because, uh, you know, like, I've heard it said. I've heard it said this way too. Like you know, if you know if you've got it all figured out, then you know what are you doing here? You know, you don't you know you don't need to work on it. Anymore. If you got it, then you you know what's the point of doing it at all? So, um, and again, I don't know if uh, you know. I would say, uh, yeah, I don't know if I would you know say that like this. This is certainly not the only approach, but I do think there's something there's something humbling, and then also something that I think is insightful about you know doing this sort of thing so anyway i really appreciate all of you coming today and and uh you know and putting yourself out there and, and uh you know participating uh we, we want to talk about the red tree event and and with us this morning we've got uh we got gabe uh, oh gabe <laughs> <you go>. <laughs> there Hi, tell us a little bit tell us some details about it gabe because i'm i'm so interested i can't I can't wait for this uh, red tree drawing. Oh. Event. I don't think we can hear oh, you. I can't hear you. We can't hear you. No. <laughs> well, I know that it's going to be. Uh, it's it's going to be after Hell City. 
right? So if you're going to Hell City, um, go to Hell City. And then I believe it's, I'm going uh, to Hell City. Believe it's, it's a week or two after that. Is that right, Gabe? I wish I had the, wish I had the details in front of me. Um, but it's going to be an amazing, there we go. That's right. Perfect. There we go. Thank you. Okay, so as you can see here, uh, you go to Tattoo Now for all this for all this information about it what's really, coming up, uh, what's on the Tattoo Now schedule. Hell City, uh, five seventeen. Uh, so what is that? May May seventeen. That's five. Yep. So May seventeenth yep. through uh, May nineteenth. That's Hell City, and um, that's going to be in Columbus. Columbus, Ohio. <laughs> Right. So, um, right. Uh, hi, you can hear me. Yeah, yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I was going to say, I'm not, a, I'm not, I'm not really even here today. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> I know, no, no, I know you're not here. I have the, uh, <laughs> the figure drawing, right? So you're going to be bringing figure drawing back. Yes. That's yeah. Back, back to the paradise events. You know, we, we did uh, a couple stretches for the art retreats where it was uh, quite a bit of figure drawing and still life and portrait drawing and all of that. But, um, so it's good. It's awesome to see you helping uh, bring it back to the tattoo world, or at least our tattoo world. Uh, that's my pleasure. I, I love doing it, and I think um, you know it's like we're gonna draw every day for our tattooing. You know what I mean? So it's real important emphasis on you know like how do you how do you design tattoos and stuff. So we, and you can find those communities at Reinventing or at Fireside. They are really great like support networks for you to you know the to focus on your craft, to get better at drawing your tattoos for your for your clients and stuff. But there's a whole big world out there of drawing that I, you know, that I that I love and I think is um, I think it it just it gives you so much, right? It, it feeds so much into your actual, you know, the work you do as a as a as a tattooer, um, or as a fine artist. You know, you uh, you. Just expose yourself, as it were, to these, um, you know, yeah, to these, these sorts of things. Drawing, still life, drawing, these, like these simple exercises, this little contour thing that we did. I remember the uh, first time we did a uh, figure drawing at one of the events. I, you know, for better or worse, I waited to the last minute because I never had hired a, a figure model before. And, you know, so like a week before I'm like, you know, in the least densely populated town in, in Western Massachusetts in the, you know, the, not the mountains, but the hills. And, um, so all of a sudden I realized, wait a minute, I'm not really going to see a wide variety of figure models to choose from. It's like, we're in the middle of the sticks and um, we can only find a dude, right? So at the last minute, we, you know, we were able to find a dude and it was like, wow, we're going to be bringing a bunch of tattooers into the middle of the woods to draw a naked dude. Um, okay. You know, I got no problems with that shit. And, um, you know, whatever, it went fine. It went perfect, right? And after four days, you know, of uh, figure drawing every morning, the you know, we packed it, right? So there was probably like 100 people in uh, figure drawing. And all the models, we had a couple other models come in. They were all floored. They're like, wow, these you tattooers, I didn't, this was not what I expected. Like everyone is here like early, ready to draw and work. You know, usually we're like twisting arms to like, you know, art school kids who are going there to waste their parents' money. <laughs> and, um, but at the end of the, at the fourth day, I walked in and uh, there was, again, there was like a hundred people there and I was walking somewhere to go do something. And I saw this dude's fucking feet above everybody's head. <laughs> I'm like, are those his feet? And like, I looked around and he was doing, it was the last uh, pose. And he was so happy with everybody that uh, he did an inverted yoga pose for the last pose for like, so, so he was upside down for like 10 fucking minutes. Wow. So people could draw him like upside down. And um, that was amazing. I was like. I, I, that was awesome. It was like, again, it was a whole, it was a whole great experience. And again, it, like the lead up to it was like, are we really going to have a bunch of, you know, black shirt tattooers fucking drawing naked dudes? <laughs> okay. I guess this is what I, I mean, it's again, an art school, yeah. normal, not a thing, you know, yeah. uh, tattoo and evidently in the tattoo world, it's not a thing either, which is great. I always thought of it like, you know, uh, before I really started practicing figure drawing and stuff, I, you know, I, I tattooed. And so there was a real connection, like I, you tattoo on bodies, right? You're tattooing somebody's body all day. You're, you know what I mean? It's like, so drawing them, I think tattoo artists specifically, they're really interested in human bodies. Yeah. Just happen yeah. To be, yeah. You just happen to be, you're very interested in it. Yeah. Also are. worth noting, if anybody yeah. else is going to start adding a figure drawing to their, to their event list, don't just go and get like 
you know, like suicide girl models or whatever. Like, there's a world of difference between being a figure model who's like going to hold a pose that's dynamic for a long period of time and somebody who just wants to look pretty for a shot. I'm, but it was all, all good for everything. But as far as figure drawing is concerned, yeah. to get yourself a figure drawing model. Right. And, and so, like I said, like this, you know, they'll do inverted yoga poses maybe. Well, I, to your point, like, so a, a person who is a suicide girl can also be a figure model, Correct. but yeah. it doesn't, you know, it doesn't automatically, you know what I mean? Causation like, is not correlation in this exactly. case. Exactly. So, you know, like somebody could be, you know, they, they could be like the leader of the church choir and also be an incredible figure model. You know what I mean? It just, uh, there, there is, uh, it takes practice to do it. The, right. the Catholic priests love to do nude figure modeling with boys. Oh, sorry. Well, well. <laughs> <laughs> shit. That's talking in fact. Well, that's the thing. It wasn't me. I'm just glad it wasn't me. Because it's also, usually me. <laughs> we're also taking it. It's like, you know, it's not a, it's not an immoral thing, right? If you're, you're studying and it's like, and, and we all yeah. have bodies, right? We all have bodies. And like, you know, and you take your clothes off and, and then you're naked. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. sort of this. There is this kind of, uh, for your body. We are hung up on so many things. It's true, but you know, for society, I'm all, I'm all for it. Higher ugly thing, figure you know? models. Yeah, higher, I, higher I bought this body for are... Elon Musk, so you know, I, I I I didn't come with any flaws. Good. Yeah. No, that's that's good yeah. to say. Well, I you know, so right? I think it's good advice to you know the higher qualified professional to do the you know. Yes. To, to do the thing you want. So hire hire a great tattooer to do your tattoo, right? Hire a, a tax professional to help you with your taxes. Yeah. <laughs> and hire like a you know figure of someone with a little bit of experience to you know to some. Yeah, to don't model. hire a tattoo artist to do your taxes. I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I would. We're you know, you know. doing our own taxes. <laughs> yeah, but, but, but James, do you want to plug your tax guy? Because you have uh, you have you're using some tax people that are dedicated. I, I do. To I do tours. have some tax guys. Let me uh, let me see if I can. Um, can plug Ryan too. I don't know who that is. Oh, Ryan Roy. Yeah, Ryan, Ryan Roy. Yeah. Roy. He's very. Yeah. Uh, but he's not going to do your taxes. No, right. no, no. But he will uh, help you take your ten percent and put it into retirement. Take your ten percent and put it into your shit fund. And uh, yeah, that stuff's that stuff's great. I just need to. Uh, you know, I got to add, like, how do you, I don't know how you do that if you're living check by check. It's like, I don't have 10% half the time. I'm fucking trying yeah. to come yeah. up with my last fucking bill money. But, um, right. but tattooers, you guys make money. Take 10%, put it here, 10%, put it there, and then only spend what's left over. It's uh, it's great. The, the tax guys, I remember when I was talking to them, I was like, this is amazing. Now I have a tax guy. And uh, a week later, they they got back to me and they were like, you know, we appreciate it, but you're not a tattooer. And I'm like, yeah, do you know how many fucking tattooers I know? I could get you 100 clients in like three months. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, but you're not a tattooer. You're like, you know, doing com complicated computer stuff. I'm like, oh, right. Okay. Um, they only work with right. tattooers. So uh, freedmantax.com, um, uh, they specialize in working, uh, you know, with, with tattoo artists specifically, right? Um, and so. Uh, so piercers, you're out of luck. Right. No, they, I don't think they, I, I don't think that, I don't know if they would or not. I really don't. Um, My but, guess is that they're just pierce or just tattooing because uh, like mm -hmm. it's, maybe it's close enough, but yeah. Anyways. Yeah. yeah so it's, uh, yeah. Um, so anyway, come check out uh, Friedman Tax. Uh, Jason and Stephen Friedman, their brothers, they, they do uh, financial advising. Uh, they've got, Oh, they do up here. They do. They also work with piercers. It's right here on the site. Oh, okay. They do. Yeah. So they do. Very cool. so, but yeah, Just not they, computer people. they will talk, you know, they will advise you on taxes and then also uh, on business planning and stuff, you know, for your, for your studio. Right. And they also, uh, you know, so for individual artists and stuff, they will, uh, they will help advise you for um, keep your taxes, uh, uh, you know, under control. Manage. That way, that way you can. I don't know. It's it's good to have an advisor. It's good to have somebody you know in your corner that understands uh, what it is that you're. It's you almost know, essential. It, it, you know, like it's like going to court without a lawyer. And I and I know because the third time I went to court without a lawyer and got my ass kicked, I was like, why do I fucking keep doing this? Like, if you're going to do your taxes, you should have an expert help you with your taxes. Right. Yeah. Uh, I hired an accountant. Yeah. 
I, I, I draw pictures on people. I, uh, that's what accountants and lawyers are for. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, for sure. Um, well, I think, uh, this has been fantastic and can't wait for the red tree event again. Uh, you know, you can see, you can find out more at the tattoo now website, scroll down and you can, you can definitely check it's it not out. That much more yet. I'm working with Durb and uh, Rember today to, uh, uh, finalize the schedule so we can start selling tickets at the end of the week. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. So, and, uh, uh, Paradise is now officially up and running tattoo gathering.com and which means we'll start plugging more guests into these, right? So I'll be having, uh, the, the guest lineup for these shows. will start to, uh, flesh out a little bit in the next couple months. Uh, nice. Uh, see? um, yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, I wanted to, uh, why don't we show it real quick? Let's see if we can, uh, yeah, I got it. Okay. All right. Tat it's a uh, tattoo gathering.com. And actually I've been working on the sweatshirts. Oh, my screen. Well, oh, I just need to you know, uh, uh, the new artwork is fucking awesome. Uh, Jake did the, uh, so this is the, the new site, October 27th, 24th to the 27th. And, uh, yeah. I don't, can you see this artwork? Yeah, yeah pretty awesome job with uh, yeah with the new art. So we're gonna put this on sweatshirts. So I believe that the early bird special includes a sweatshirt. I need to make the sweatshirt, put it up so if people actually buy it. But um, yeah, it's all here. We've got uh, new sponsors coming on. We have a uh, scholarship fund that you know there'll be uh, forms going up for, to both donate to the scholarship fund, but also to apply for it. And uh, I believe we've got a coalition tattoo is going to match donations up to ten thousand dollars. So wow. if, uh, if there's companies that are interested in helping support younger tattooers that can't quite afford to get to Paradise, yeah, the scholarship fund will be a way for us to help uh, help facilitate you know people doing that for, for you know for younger tattooers and apprentice wannabes. And, um, yeah, That's awesome. Awesome. this year we you know we uh, uh, last year went off really well. It was you know uh, coming back from. Uh, you know, I had a, I had, a, I had a business reset a couple of years ago, and then we had COVID, and then we did a couple of events during COVID. And uh, this last Paradise, uh, we did a full gathering again with tattooing and, and everything, and it was great. Paid off the you know credit card bills from the previous event COVID events. So we're starting at square one with new sponsors, with a scholarship fund, and uh, and it's still January, so I might be able to get the schedule finished and the floor plan done by February or March which would give us like six or seven months to, to promote it fully. So wicked excited about the new tattoo gathering coming up. Well, I, I went to a few conventions last year and each one was, was terrific, but paradise was definitely uh, a unique experience. So much education and really just a lot of, uh, you know, I, I felt I, a lot of people say this, but I really felt more kind of uh, uh, like charged, you know, afterward, you know, I felt like, I felt like recharged. I felt like, you know, excited to get back to to work to doing you know to doing work and painting paintings and drawing drawings and doing tattoos and stuff it's um, kind of fun it's, it's not actually a convention right it's a gathering you know yeah. and, uh, so it's uh you know it's not necessarily the same but it's also like I, was, I think i was saying earlier it is crazy every year trying to to go into an event being like wait everyone seems to be like this is you know i'm going back more inspired i'm going this is changing my life there's a lot of you know younger tattooers who so one of some of the first experiences with open-minded new new school tattooing right or new philosophy of tattooing and whatnot and um i always freak out i'm like how are we going to do this again like people sometimes people are coming back for like 10 years now and uh I, I realized like third or fourth year in i was like you know it's not actually my job to make sure that everyone you know leaves more inspired than they came right it's their job what I do is I get everybody together and uh, there's always a unique cast of characters. You know, there's always, you know, there's people that have come back for, you know, you know, some of the headliners keep coming back, but um, there's always fresh new blood and everyone's learned something new. So even if it's like a lot of the same people, sometimes everyone's learned something new and, uh, and you can't experience everything from everybody. So even if it's the same exact people with the same exact schedule, you could go back two or three years. Cause you, you, you there's so much stuff to do. And, uh, yeah. Anyways, Thanks for uh, thanks for coming and uh, for for contributing and uh, for doing these shows every Monday and uh, yeah and, and helping me plug this for for fifteen minutes without a. No, that's I mean I think that's a that's a, a you know like it's these live things you know what I mean it's like 
having the shows that are asynchronous and you know we're all you know you can go back and watch stuff especially you know if it was like uh there was something that you missed or something you want to repeat like you can do that but going live and being there in person with other people like in a real space we didn't know what we lost until we lost it right <laughs> that wow. makes sense. we didn't know what we didn't know how valuable that stuff was until you know until it changed um but what's also kind of cool is like you know uh this whole like you know new potential for people from all over the place to be able to meet up and then you know gather i think that's uh you know that's that's what new technology that's what the new technology and innovations in technology and the internet have really brought us so you can meet people that you otherwise you wouldn't just sort of meet in your hometown you know what i mean or in your in your neighborhood or whatever you know like you don't fit in well you find the other people that also don't fit in exactly and you know and you kind of gravitate you know sure. and uh and i think that that's that there's a real potential in that kind of uh you know that kind of relation and so having the real thing like paradise i think it, and and hell city and and the you know and the red tree drawing event those those are uh ultimately what this kind of supports yeah you know for me the uh when 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 COVID happened and things were going hybrid i'm like we've already been hybrid like is that a thing <laughs> like is that new um you know and again i've always been a computer geek so i've always been in the tattoo internet space and then in real world right and, and it's really that dance between the real world and virtual right we meet each other online we talk to each other once a week online or twice a week online then we get in person and it's like, holy shit, you're not just a fucking character on a TV screen that I interact with. You're a real, actual person. And I know a lot about you already, like you're, you know, and then you strengthen those relationships. And then all the people that just watch that show up, they get to say hi, you know, and, and, it, and of course, it's always weird for us because we're not reality TV people. And the audience size is much smaller. But people watch this stuff. You go to an event, they're like, oh, I saw you. And, and then when you go back online it's a whole different round, right? It's like, instead of just being that weird character that we never actually met, it's like, oh, that's James, the guy that, you know, we did this stuff with and had experiences with. And uh, yeah, I don't know. Anyways, so for me, it's like that, 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 that swashing, the tides going back and forth, the dance, mm -hmm. I guess. I, I don't dance, so I hate you. I don't. Point is, the dance back and forth between the virtual world and the real world um, is awesome. And yeah, it's, it's, it's always a, a pleasure to meet people in person. Oh. Although that said, there's only three times I'm going to meet people this year because I still haven't caught the bug and I'm not planning on it. Well, yeah, I, I, I'm rooting for you. I'm rooting for you. Um, so don't, yeah, don't don't take offense if I only talk to you for three minutes at a time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you, yeah, gotta be uh, gotta be on the gotta be on the watch out. Well, thank you everybody for coming. Um, why don't we uh, why don't we sign off and then we'll uh, we'll get on with it. We'll get on with it. Perfect. All right. So uh, and then we'll be back at noon for Jason's. <laughs> we're going to be back at noon for Jason's. Uh, for right. Jason. Skill build, skill building we'll Monday. We love Jason. Yes. Creature, uh, where can we find you? We want to find you. Creature's Cave everywhere with the K. You know. Creature with the K. Absolutely. Appreciate, appreciate everybody. Uh, thank you for doing all of this. I learn a lot every week. Well, we appreciate you coming on, Creature. It's, it's great to see you. Uh, and... Uh, Thanks for sharing, you know, like your, uh, your outlook on stuff, right? Like you were saying, you know, you're going to give it another try. And so I'm, uh, you know, we're all rooting for you. So, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm doing my best yeah. over here. Cool. Great. Great to see you. Fingers crossed. Amber, where can we find you? If we want to, we want to contact you. You can find me everywhere on social media under Amber Morgan. And if you wander in a, to a dark forest under the moonlight and call my name three times, I might show up. Okay. All right. Well, we'll 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 try that. Maybe we'll stream it. You know what I mean? And see how see how it goes. And real world event. So well, it was great to see you, Amber. Thank you for coming today. And uh, you too. I'm glad I was able to make it. Things were a little crazy at the beginning of the year, but they've calmed down. And awesome. this is always a great way to start my week for art because I'm warming up. I'm starting right away. And it keeps my mind on what I got to do. Thank you so much. I uh, appreciate it. Hopefully we'll see you next week. Oh, Kyle Olson. Love you guys. Yeah. Love you too, Kyle. Um, hey, we'll Kyle. Catch you next time. I'm sure. Uh, Gabe, where can we, where can we learn more about, 
Uh, uh, tattoonow.com and tattoogathering.com. And okay. reinventing the tattoo.com and fireside tattoo.com. But uh, yeah, you can do a search for Gabe Ripley. Just don't, you know, don't believe everything you read. The ghost in the machine. Ghost in the tattoo machine. <laughs> Get that, get that domain now. Okay, so um, yeah, yes. really. The, I got it. Uh, hey, you, you know what else? You know what other domain I got? No, what is it? It's a fucking two-word domain. Perfectclientele.com. No, you should, a, you should be a consultant, I think. For you know. <laughs> <laughs> you right, right, a uh, fractional uh, executive for tattooers. So if you want <laughs> an executive level, but I still you know swear and, and smoke weed, but I'm an executive level functioning person for tattooers. Wait, uh, I thought that was a prerequisite. Yeah, are they boxes you have to check? Yeah. 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 Well, I work best with people that check all the boxes, yes. So it's legal in Ohio now. It's legal in Jersey. Whoa. Woo. Is that well, I think uh yeah, to each their own. But Gabe, thank you so much uh for everything you do behind the scenes. And yeah, it's uh um it's I would I I like you know love consulting with you. I think uh, I think it helps my business out uh, considerably to be a part of Tattoo Now. So um, anyway, you can learn more by visiting Tattoo Now. Of course, the TattooGathering.com, or is it just it's just TattooGathering.com, right? TattooGathering.com, yeah. TattooGathering.com. If you want to learn more about the Paradise Retreat, reinventing the tattoo, fireside tattoo, you can uh, you know there's there's a big community out here. So uh, be sure to check it out. Uh, again, want to thank Guy. Uh, thanks, Guy, for uh, thanks, guy. yeah. Thank Steve, you very much. Yeah, thank you, Guy, for everything you do for being the uh, you know the inspiration behind the community. Um, hope you're doing well. I uh, hope you all uh, have a have a great week. Keep drawing, right? Uh, you gotta you gotta figure out something that you did right in your drawing. You gotta think about it. You gotta you gotta right. Um, and then and, and then if it's if your drawing is perfect, right? Then find something wrong with it. Right. <laughs> then find something, find something you find something you'll improve next time. So, uh, but make sure to do it right. Make sure to keep drawing, right? Happy drawing, everybody. Um, you can, uh, uh, yeah. Make sure to join Jason Leeser at noon today, Mondays. Skip building uh, drawing group. Okay, cut it, cut it, James. I'll keep right, post, it. I'll right. keep posting comments if you don't stop. Peace. <laughs> See ya. Happy drawing. See you next week.